We're going to talk about rounding, and we're going to use a number line. This is lesson 9.11. Rounding a number to the tens place means we find the ten it's closest to and change the number to that ten. We can round to the nearest hundred by finding which hundred our number is closest to. We can use a number line to help us round. Now there are actual rules for rounding that we're going to learn about in grade three in third grade, but this is only second grade, so we're just using a number line for right now. If you want to see those rules, then you can click on this video's description and there'll be links to those videos about the rounding rules, okay? So I have a number line here and we can see our tens. We have zero tens, we have a 10, a 20, and a 30. I'm going to use this to find the nearest 10. We need to find 12 is closer to. So the first thing we do is we find the 12 on the number line. We can move our jewel there. We look at which two 10s the 12 is in between. It's in between a 10 and a 20. And then we see which one it's closer to. Well, it's closer to the 10, isn't it? So 12 is closer to 10. Now let's do 27. We find the 27 on the number line. Let's put our jewel there. And we see it's in between 20 and 30. But which one is it closer to? The 20 or the 30? It's definitely closer to the 30, isn't it? So 27 is going to round to 30 if we round it to the nearest 10. See that? Let's try 23. We find 23. We can move our jewel there. It's in between the 20 and the 30. Is it closer to the 20 or the 30? It's closer to the 20, isn't it? So 23 is going to round to 20 if we round it to the nearest 10. It's closer to 20. How about 18? Let's find the 18. It's right here. It's in between 10 and 20. Which one is it closer to? It's definitely closer to the 20, isn't it? So 18, rounded to the nearest 10, would round to 20. See? We just look for the one that it's closer to. Now that's rounding to the nearest 10. Let's try rounding to the nearest 100. Now I don't have all the hundreds written here. I just have some. We have 500, 600, 700, 800. All right. So my number line is written counting up by tens and then you can see the hundreds. See? 510, 520, 530. Okay. So 620 is closer to what? So let's find 620 on our number line. Here it is right here. It's in between 600 and 700, isn't it? And which 100 is it closer to? It's closer to the 600, isn't it? So if we round 620 to the nearest 100, it would be 600. Let's try 530. We find the 530 on the number line. We see it's in between 500 and 600, but which one is it closer to? Definitely closer to the 500, isn't it? So 530 rounds to 500 when we round it to the nearest 100. Let's try 790. We find 790 on our number line. It's way over here. Wow, that's an easy one, isn't it? It's in between the 700 and the 800, and it's closer to the 800. 790 rounds to 800 when we round it to the nearest 100. Okay, sorry about the view there. All right, that 90 means it's almost to the next 100, doesn't it? How about 590? Let's see where that is. Let's move our jewel all the way back to 590 which is right here, and we can see that it's very close to 600, isn't it? It's in between the 500 and the 600, but it's very close to the 600. So 590 is closer to 600. When we round it to the nearest 100, it would be 600. That 90 is making it go almost to the next 100, see? 
It's making it go to the next 100, to the 600. All right, let's try it again. Now we have 710. So let's look at where 710 is on our number line, and it's right here, see? And we can see it's really, really close to the 700, isn't it? We can see it's in between the 700 and 800, but it's very close to the 700. If we round, whoops, if we round 710 to the closest 100, it would be 700, see? Let's do 670. Well, 670 is right here. It's in between the 600 and the 700. Is it closer to the 600 or the 700? Well, it's closer to the 700 also, isn't it? If we were to round 670 to the closest 100, it would be 700. See? And so is this one. See how they both can be rounded? Because the 710 was right here, they're both very close to the 700, see? 740 is closer to what? So let's find the 740. It's right in between the 700 and the 800. And if we look at it, we can see it's closer to the 700. It's really almost in between, isn't it? But it is closer to the 700. So 740 is closer to 700 also. All of these are, see that? What's happening is the numbers that are in between here, okay? In fact, I should make this. The numbers that are in between here are closer to 700 and the numbers going from here are closer to 800, see? Do you see how that's happening? So. Any number that falls inside of here is going to be closer to the 700. Any number that falls, let me draw this. Any number that falls here is going to be closer to the 600. See? So this is the 600 area. That's the 700 area. See? So if it lands here, that's closer to 600 than 500, isn't it? If it lands here, that's closer to 600. See how that's happening? So let's find 560, let's do that one, all right? So we'll move our jewel to the 560 right here. It's in between the 500 and the 600. Which one is it closer to, the 500 or the 600? That's closer to the 600, isn't it? So when we round 560 to the nearest 100, it would round to 600, okay? So like I said, you're going to get into the actual rules of this when you get into the next grade. But for right now, you can use a number line to round numbers and see which one they're closer to. Okay? All right. That's the end of Chapter 9. We're going to move on to Chapter 10, and we're going to talk about shapes in geometry, and we're going to talk a little bit about fractions, not too much because we're really going to get into that in third grade, but we'll talk about it a little bit to get you ready for third grade, okay? I hope I'll see you in chapter 10. Bye.